What's up guys? It's Jake here from Cheap Flap Gaming. Today, project video for you guys. Project log. I'm working on a display board. And I would like to share with you guys sort of how I paint it. My thoughts behind the build. I'll uh, show you the build, which uh, I had done for me. I did not build this myself, but uh, I was very involved in the build process, which was really fun for me. And uh, just kind of um, get you guys some content. I know that I've not been as active at all as I would like to be on YouTube for the past probably couple months. Uh, there's been little to no content coming out. Uh, as I kind of iron things out in my personal life, uh, I'm going to be having more time and more dedication towards the uh, the YouTube sort of aspect of my my job and my hobby as it relates to Warhammer. So good stuff. More videos coming. That's what. That's all I mean to say with that. So, let's take a look at this display board, shall we? Flip it around into forward-facing mode. Here we are. So, this is a display board primarily for my Adeptus Mechanicus army, which is my primary army uh, as of late in Warhammer 40k that I'm using in events and competitive play. So... A uh, big thing for me is having a cool display board to go with my army when I go to a event. I need to have a display board. So um, you can see the paint job here on this base. All of this is going to match that. It's going to be the same paint job, same color scheme, so that when I put my AdMech on here, all the bases are going to match, which I think is really important for the overall look of a uh, sort of display in an army board is have a base that sits on it and and looks the same so that it it really sells the whole effect. So let's get this off of here. There we are. Now, the build. This display board, I mentioned I didn't do this. It was built to me by Richard over at the Nerd Life and I cannot begin to recommend Richard enough, guys. You've heard me mention him before on this channel. He's done a lot of work for me on, on model building and a miniature building, but he also does terrain work and pretty much anything uh, that you that you might want to do that's kind of even remotely related towards custom building, custom uh, conversion work, or project builds, uh, things like display boards. Just give him a message, he probably does it. Um, he's a very talented conversion artist as well, so I don't want to spend too much time plugging him in this video because I want to show you guys the board but really guys fantastic job thank you Richard uh, for this build you guys need to go check him out that's the nerd life T-H-A nerd life uh, he has a YouTube channel and uh, Facebook I believe it's art by Richard um, and just send him a message really nice guy easy to talk to and uh, he'll help you out so let's look at this the build was I was very specific in how I, I wanted this built because I wanted it to be able to break down and fit in my battle foam case. So the look at my display board here, you might be able to see that there's a seam here. These will separate, and there are two additional levels on top of that. Now, every piece that this breaks down into is this size or smaller. So if we put this on top here, you'll notice that this second level is just a little bit on our size compared to uh, this tray. That allows me to break this all down, stack it up, and I'll show you that in a second, slide it into my battle foam tray, put my army on top of it, and uh, it's all in my case. Away we go. Bing, bang, boom, we're off to the event. So that's fantastic. It help, helps to keep the tray, or the uh, board rather, from getting damaged and chipped. You get stuff like this starting to happen. Um, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to remedy that kind of stuff moving forward. So, this breaks down. This comes off the top. And you can see these fantastic grooves in the flock here where the the carving, the custom carve work slots in, which help really helps to make it look like one piece instead of three solid layers, having that slope up into the uh, sort of the carve of the rock face gives it a lot more realistic look. And um, Richard did a really good job with that. So these are magnetized. Little magnet uh, screw here 
which goes into a magnet on the, the bottom. So this will actually get magnetized down into this to help provide some stability. Same good thing with uh, this guy here. Some screws and magnets buried in here very nicely with spackle probably. And then uh, into the receiving end again, everything is carved and uh, the flock has been laid to receive this exact shape, which is fantastic. I'm gonna set this over here. I'll give you a quick size look. So again, very nice, it'll fit in there perfectly. And then the bottom level here, these guys are magnetized to slot together left and right. Now it's, it's hard even for me to break this apart. Uh, you can see that it's very strong, which is awesome because you don't want to bump the table or bump your tray and have your minis come falling down. That's nightmare level there. So the magnets really help to sort of have everything more stable and firm up the entire piece. So that's how the build went. Um, one thing we discussed was ways to break up sort of the flatness and the monotony of just like the rock face. I'm not too concerned with that because I want this tray to have a lot of usable uh, space. I don't want to restrict the area that I can place models by having things sticking up all over and then rocks and things that'll mess, how up, mess up how I can place my models on it. So I was okay with having something that was more flat and not quite as interesting. One thing we did do, um, he uh, carved out some areas that I can place water effects and I'm planning on using uh, like dirty oily water in here and sludge kind of give it a nice uh, little break between all the sand and gravel so it'll help break that up uh, some more of that stuff you guys might have seen on this tray here so we've got some some divots and things to receive some water effect now Another thing that we tried originally was he had a uh, a hole in here where we could place a stick that had a rock kind of attached to it that would allow it to slot in there and sit. And then that would help to break up the sort of, again, flatness and, and sort of uh, look to this. But um, within a half hour of owning this tray and having it back in my house, I broke one of the pieces. So I took that as a bad sign that uh, in the long run it would not last with my clumsiness. So what I did was I just plugged these holes up with sand and we're going to paint them because that uh, is not something that's going to be okay for, for a clumsy guy like me. So that's the build, that's the tray, uh, mainly portability in mind and uh, a, a nice look. I think the carving looks fantastic, the rock face. This is the style I wanted. I showed him a few pictures and he nailed it. Looks really, really good. Um, it's going to look awesome painted up. So, what I want to do now is throw some paint down and I'm going to sort of come back to you guys after I put down the base layers and show you guys kind of how I did that so that you guys can maybe take that forward uh, if you'd like to make your own sort of gravelly display board and like the color scheme that I did. So I will be back to you guys in just a minute. A little bit of prep work before I begin the actual uh, painting of this board. One thing that I like to do when I'm working with any kind of gravel or flocking that uses sand like this or, or gravel is to remove any of the loose pieces that um, might come out later because we want to we want to tear them off now so that down the road when this is fully painted we don't have a random rock come off of here and see the pink underneath or or uh, just solid black or something from the primer because uh, that'll really stand out and be obvious in our paint job and, and look kind of bad so what I did is I just took my hand and kind of rubbed it with a decent amount of force across all of the gravel and what that does is picks up the pieces you can see I missed a couple here just like that, that weren't quite sealed as well by the uh, sealant. So generally these are going to be large pieces like this. This is what I ended up getting off of the, all three levels of the board, so not very much, but you don't want these to come off uh, when you're done painting it. So you just kind of take a quick little scrape 
decent amount of force and pull off any of those rocks that are going to be a problem for you later. So I did that and then I wanted to get a nice solid uh, starting point for my paint job so I uh, recovered everything with a nice solid layer of black to get that started. Now something to keep in mind if you're using spray paint watch out with foam because spray paint does eat foam so you don't want to do that unless you want that sort of look very cool when you're doing it on purpose but when you're not you can very easily ruin a piece so be careful there I used a uh, primer on my airbrush uh, one last thing I want to mention some of you guys might be going crazy because of this seam here um, due to the restrictions of breaking this down and transporting it the only way that I would be able to get around using this seam is if Richard made another piece that fit over the top here to cover that up um, I do have a plan to just kind of set a model here to help hide that seam I think that'll work um, but with a little more planning I may have been able to avoid that that's okay it doesn't bother me too much uh, another thing I thought of that I should mention is why is this surface not carved um, the the thought process here was that this surface is going to be handled a lot and it's going to take the most sort of damage from handling uh, out of the whole board so what I'm going to do is use some um, wood veneer or something some quarter inch uh, like birch or some nice solid wood and frame out this whole thing in wood and then get a nice nameplate that goes across here and says the name of my army and my name and my um, business name and stuff like that that will hide the seam in the front here by, with the nameplate. So really, that'll help. And I think it'll look really nice. Paint the edge black or something, kind of like a when you have a, a model, the base of it, the rim. You paint the rim black and it kind of makes everything look more professional. Uh, hopefully it'll do that with this display board. So... That's my prep work that I would do. Um, probably would be a good idea to do another layer of like sealant here. You could do varnish or just uh, PVA and water thin down to get a nice seal on all of this stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and just paint it and then seal it afterwards. I'm confident Richard did a good job sealing everything before he sent it to me. So uh, we'll take a look and lay down our base colors. I'll be back to you guys in just a second. Right guys, so we've started the painting process laying down two of our main colors. And I'm just going to give you guys a quick overview of the um, main areas of this piece here. So, the colors that were used for this, very simple. These are Vallejo. German gray. Uh, I believe there's a color equivalent called anthracite gray. I can't remember which one is the old version. And then, oh dear, Vallejo Model Air Medium Brown. So that, uh, if you can see here, sort of a dark brown, little hint of red to it, and then a dark gray. So, technique here is very simple. I did this with my airbrush. Um, depending on the size of piece you're working on, even going for spray paint would be great. A, a very efficient way to do this. You want to leave some of the black showing through. So if you look carefully here, um, these paints are Model Air paints. And I even thinned them out further um, pretty far. So they're very, very thin, like water consistency or thinner paints. Uh, over the black primer that we had previously. So this allows some uh, varying amounts of shade of the same color uh, of intensity over that black. So the black will show through more or less essentially depending on how long our airbrush stays in one spot to allow more of that color to build up. So you kind of just want to um, hold your airbrush pretty far away or your spray paint can pretty far away so you're doing more of like an overspray onto this piece of terrain 
and just kind of randomly move around and keep keep it moving. Don't stay in one spot very long or you'll get a bright sunspot kind of look in an area. You don't want that. And just build it up until you're happy with the effect. So um, this piece I would say is the one that I'm most happy with. You can see there's a lot more brown present here than in say in something like this. This is a lot more gray. What I'm going to do is go back in with this this brown and reestablish that uh, on this area here and here to get it a little more brown and less uh, gray. Keep the gray more to the rock face, which we're going to um, leave more exposed like that. So that's what we've got so far. Pretty easy. If you don't have an airbrush, uh, you're going to have a little more difficult time to get these these subtle transitions and the colors working together like this, I would definitely recommend to use uh, more, do more of your bulk work with washes if you don't have an airbrush. Uh, that will allow you to get the same sort of transition, uh, but you're going to work from brighter to darker with a wash instead of darker to brighter like we're doing now. So if you guys have questions about that, please down in the comments below throw them there and I'll do my best to answer them. So what I'm going to do now is reestablish that brown like I just mentioned and then I'm going to start with the highlights. So I'll check back in with you guys in just a second. Okay guys so we have the highlight colors applied and this is already starting to look pretty cool. I'm going to show you the more interesting pieces. I have this here just kind of resting so that I don't chip any of the surface that I don't want damaged yet. This is a very vulnerable stage of the paint job. So very simple techniques here. The colors I used Vallejo Model Air Light Brown. You can see that next to our base color here so that's a very aggressive highlight. And then we came in with Light Gray which again, next to its darker color, again, a very, very aggressive highlight. Now, these two colors are very bright, and it's very easy to kind of wash out your tones and make them bright and um, not get a very nice looking technique. So you have to be careful, build up slowly. Again, very thin on these two colors, and hold your airbrush or, or your spray paint can very far away. I'm talking like um, a foot or two feet back even, like very very far and just do huge overspray kind of broad strokes and let that sort of mist of paint come in and hit the raised edges of your rocks almost like dry brushing. It's very similar. Um, I've heard it called overspray before. I really like that word for it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this and you can almost see the color change on this piece depending on what angle you look at it from. And that's just simply because of the overspray, the angle that you choose to have your airbrush when you spray. Again, that mist of paint is going to come in and catch. So it almost looks like um, a shadow on one side. Uh, for me, I didn't want that effect to be too strong because I wanted this piece to look pretty similar no matter what angle you were viewing it from. So I came in from multiple different angles, but if you really wanted a stark effect like that, you pick an angle and just only spray from that side and you'll get a really nice um, sort of transition of, of shadow cast through that piece. So, uh, we've highlighted here uh, for the rock faces really I just came in and, and kind of from above at a 45 I sprayed this top edge to kind of pick that out and let it sort of um, blow down into the lower areas and leave those darker you want to watch out for speckling when you're using a color this different from its base so again you want to thin it out really far make sure you don't get speckling on your hard work here so um, let's see what else can we talk about? Uh, at this point of the project, I would definitely recommend a varnish layer or a sealant of some kind. From here on out, 
I'm done with the airbrush and I'm going to come in with some brushwork, things like dry brushing and washing, more aggressive things that are easy to chip this, this styrofoam with. So what I'm going to do is put down a layer or two or three even of varnish. You can use matte gloss. Uh, if you don't want a glossy effect, you can put gloss down first and then put matte over it. Um, you can seal with PVA or Elmer's glue mixed with water. Whatever you are comfortable with. For me, I'm going to go with a uh, varnish from a spray can or through my airbrush, depending on what I have more of on hand, just so that I can really get some nice layers established over this to protect this paint job that I've done. I don't want it to start chipping too much. Uh, another thing I want to mention, if you're doing something like a modular uh, terrain board or a modular gaming board or something where you have different pieces like this that need to match up, make sure you paint them when they're next to each other like this because you want the, the colors to look like they go uh, from one piece to the next because you, you don't want it to be obvious that it's two separate pieces, right? So if you were to paint this and then paint this separately, you would have your different levels of highlight that wouldn't match up from piece to piece and you would see it right away and it would be really obvious. So just make sure to paint your pieces next to each other uh, so that you can get them to line up and look like they belong next to each other. Um, we are going to wash things down pretty heavily. So if you have like, you can tell back here, these pieces are a lot brighter than uh, say this face here. I'm going to come back in and brighten this up a little more, but if they are a bit different, don't worry about getting them exactly matched up because the wash is going to pull everything together a little bit and it's nice to have a little bit of variety throughout the, the ground. So, you know, real ground out there in the uh, world, the big scary world, is not all the same tone uh, of gravel. It's going to be varying and different. So keep that in mind was as you work through this. So I'm going to throw the varnish down, let it sit for at least a day, or at least overnight I should say, and then we'll come back with some dry brushing and washes. Okay guys, here we are. I've let this uh, sit overnight with a pretty hefty coat of gloss varnish over the top of it. Should be fully dry now. It still feels maybe like I should have left it a little longer, but we're going to proceed anyway and we already have over here. Uh, so the next stage that I was telling you guys before is of course the wash stage. Now as you can see I'm using a very heavy wash on this. Um, the reason that I decided to do that is I was a little too gray over here. It wasn't quite going to match my AdMac bases as well as I thought. I was a little too heavy on the gray tones. So I used more wash to compensate for that and blend everything more into the brown sort of um, spectrum of things. So this can be adjusted. Uh, your wash can be, or your glaze, can be thinned out uh, more or less with something like water, airbrush thinner, um, what do they call that? Uh, witch hazel. You can use that as, as well. That works pretty damn well to uh, thin that out. And I wanted to show you one of the reasons I used gloss varnish. So um, this is a lot of surface to wash and just brushing it on even with a brush like this is going to take some time. So here's what I've decided to do here and uh, it's working out pretty well for me. I've got my homemade brown wash here. This is Vallejo Game Color Sepia Tone with uh, some glaze medium and airbrush thinner. Get it the consistency you like and I've got it in this dropper bottle here. So basically what uh, I'm going to do is just come along here and get a pretty healthy amount on the area I want and because I've gloss varnished everything it's pretty slick and you can see that you can kind of pull the wash where you want it to go a little bit. This is hard to do with my left hand, that's my non-dominant, so you kind of just come in and, and move things around with the brush and get it to where you want to go. So I'm going to carry on doing that and I'll come back to you guys when it's done. It's been about two hours since I applied the wash. You can see it's drying pretty nicely. There are a couple spots where it's still uh, a little wet. You can see as we go over here. So it needs a little more time yet, but 
Um, let's see, this was the first piece I did, the small one. And you can see that as it dries, it's not as dark. So it definitely, you can kind of see the difference that it did uh, through that part too there. And you can definitely see too that it cut down on that glossiness from the gloss varnish. This obviously still has it. I'm going to hit that with, a, I think, a black wash here and kind of blend the two together. But you don't have to worry about that gloss from the gloss wash showing through your paint job. It's just a protective layer kind of intermittently as you uh, go through the different stages. So I'm going to let this wash layer fully dry. And then I'm going to come through with a little black wash. And I do that same technique here on this. I want this to be more, I don't want as much brown here. This, this exposed rock I feel like needs to be a different tone. Uh, but also we'll bring it all together and make it blend nicely when we do our final dry brush layer. So we'll have to just see how it goes. So once this dries, we're going to come in with some black wash on these rock faces and then I'll check in with you guys and see how that looks. Here we are with the black wash that I said I was going to apply to uh, the rock faces and the patchy areas throughout. Um, it's still wet, very wet, but you can see the effect here. I'm very pleased with how this is turning out so far. Really adds another level of detail and realistic sort of definition to these rock faces. Uh, I also decided to put the heavy black wash in these divots that will receive the water effects to help make them look more oily and kind of like uh, nasty looking water. And then I thought since the rock faces themselves had that black uh, on the outside, I should also use a little bit of black where they're going to sit along this edge to kind of match up so it wasn't as uh, abrupt of a transition between brown and black. And uh, that led me into a thought about something that might be helpful for some of you guys out there. So. I'm going to switch to my left hand so that I can use my, my brush with the right hand. So uh, the basic idea here is feathering. Very, very easy. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get our black wash. Now hopefully I can keep everything in frame and not mess up too badly here. And so I want to use this black wash to make kind of an area of darker gravel here so it, just to break it up and make it look a little more interesting let's do something like in here so when we do this get some more wash just kind of apply it randomly here's what we don't want you see this edge how it's very defined and if we look back um, for depending on the effect we want, like an oil stain or something, that looks fine or looks okay. But for just like a, a nice subtle transition to a darker area of dirt, we don't want this nice clean and defined edge. So we want to get rid of that by feathering it out. So we're going to get the wash off our brush. If there's a little left on there, that's fine. Uh, just get some water. And what I do is I kind of get it, get most of the water off using the edge of the cup here. And now we're going to come to this edge and kind of just start working away at it or feathering out that edge, get some more water. And you can see the difference just going back in. And I like to think of it as sort of pulling that edge out into the surrounding area. And you have to kind of work fast here. So I'll leave a little bit and you can see the difference there. It's a bit tricky with the glare, but I'll come back to you guys when it's dry and I'll let you see the difference between what it would be. And already we can see that it's very subtle now, much more realistic looking. There isn't that straight defined edge uh, to the transition. So you can keep doing that and kind of pulling that out, just play around, use different amounts of water to sort of get the uh, the black where you want it. And then you can also 
uh, once it dries, use the brown, start on the outside, and kind of reverse it, pull the brown into the black for an even better transition. But again, that's adding time, something that uh, maybe isn't necessary since we're going to dry brush over all of this anyway. A lot of it's going to get covered up. But it does help. It's very subtle, uh, but it does help add some realism and break up this sort of monotone to the ground. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a couple more random areas like this throughout the flat sort of surface here. And then we're going to let it dry and we'll get over to the dry brushing. Okay guys, so the wash has fully dried. I stuck this uh, all these pieces in front of a fan for a couple hours and that took care of it. Wanted to show you how these turned out. I think the this was the one that we did on camera and you can see that that's a nice subtle fade can't really see much of the actual uh, like a hard edge that we we had when I first put it down so I think those black spots did a really nice job of breaking up the the look of this dirt here's the top level so the next step is dry brushing now these are the bases I have on my AdMac and they're all painted already. I think these are a little bright so I might end up doing another layer of wash over the uh, bases that I already have painted because I, I'm really liking the darker sort of look of this one so I'm gonna try a light dry brush first and see how that looks and then if these bases don't match well enough I might have to darken my bases down so they look closer to this uh, but we're gonna use Vallejo model color ivory. It's a off-white sort of beigey white ivory color. Give you guys, maybe I'll set this kind of on top. I don't want to actually set it in to the grooves because I don't want to chip it, but that'll give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Pretty cool. I think it's turning out really well. Can't wait to see it done. So let's move on to the dry brushing step. I'll see you guys in a second. And here it is guys, we are completed with the majority of the paint job, well all of the paint job, really just some special effects kind of stuff to do left on this board. I think it turned out absolutely fantastic. The rock face really got picked out after that dry brush layer and just is well defined and just looks really cool. you guys see this side where the most rock is exposed even though this is two layers whoops it still doesn't look like two layers it it blends together well you really only see that seam there because I picked it out by dry brushing it a little bit so you know from here fantastic very very nice I wanted to show you guys the sort of sounds like we got a rock under there uh, this was what we did on camera, and even though we dry brushed over the top of this, you can still see the, the subtle transition between the brown and the black area. I was a little worried that I was going to cover up all that work by dry brushing it, but uh, it turned out really nicely. You can see throughout the, the sort of surface here that there are a lot of different uh, sort of colors and transitions here. So, I want to point this out. This is something that came off. Now, if you look here, you can see that that is something that I chipped off. And this was even after a few layers of wash and and whatever came over. I thought it would just cover up, but it's still a little obvious to me. That's only because I know it's there. You know, when you get back here, you don't see it. But uh, when I, I should have taken a picture or something, because when it first chipped off, it stood out like a, a beacon of terribleness on this board so I just can't stress enough if you're doing something like this do a good seal um, once you're done painting you don't want to go too crazy sealing it before you paint it because you don't want to you know gum up details for your paint job but guys make sure you seal it because that is just you're, you've done all this hard work don't let it get chipped and look crappy if you can help it so 
I have blabbered along for, I'm going to guess, well over a half hour once I edit this all together. So what I'm going to do is, <laughs> is end the video here. Um, I had in mind originally to do everything together, show you guys what I was going to do for the border, the wood thing, I mentioned that, the nameplates, uh, but I think it's just in best interest to make that another video. Um, the water effects and all that will be in that video as well, so like a part two. I've had a lot of requests to do more sort of candid and long videos that people can put on in the background while they're painting and just kind of listen to and sort of periodically glance up at instead of the short, more concise sort of project builds. Just put the camera on, talk, and, and do things. So this definitely, uh, this definitely did it. <laughs> this is a longer video. So hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you think of kind of this sort of style if you like the more, I'm going to call it candid, kind of behind the scenes look at stuff where I just talk about anything that comes to mind as I'm working on something and uh, show you guys pretty much the every step of the way. You can see I've got my AdMax sort of ready and poised here to be placed on this board. Uh, what I'll do is close this video with a couple pictures of my army on the board for you guys. We'll see how the bases match. I have a feeling that they're not quite... We'll just th quickly throw an onager on here. So they're not quite the same tone. We got a little bit different level of probably the wash and the dry brushing going on here so it's a little more brown uh, but I think it's close enough and at least for now it's acceptable so I'll set up my whole army take a couple pictures and, and leave you guys with those the final steps in the next video if you're looking to see what I'm doing next again the water effects the border around this I'm gonna come up with some way uh, you can see now I just have a board under this so I can carry it around uh, I want something a little better and a little more permanent than that. Uh, we have to do final varnish layers. Uh, any other effects, maybe I'll put some skulls and stuff to kind of brighten, uh, add a little more shabazz to this piece. I think that's a word. And um, we'll kind of just go from there. So thank you guys again for watching. Thank you again, Richard. The board is fantastic. I love it. I can't wait to take it to an event. I love the fact that it breaks down and goes into my case. I know a lot of people maybe would want one that's one solid piece here and doesn't break apart, but me, for me, this is perfect. I can store it, I can keep it out of the way, and it's, it's perfect. So consider checking out my Instagram, my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, if you're into that sort of thing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye now.